Hello, in this lecture we're going to talk about a flexible budget. At the end of this, we will be able to explain what a flexible budget is, contrast a flexible budget with a static budget, and create a flexible budget from a static budget. So we're going to start over here with the static budget on the left hand side. The static budget is static because it's based on a fixed level of production. So generally when we make the budget we do have to get down to one level of production. That level in this case being 15,000. This is going to be the income statement here. So we're looking at the budgeted income statement in a normal income statement type format. That format being broken out by category. So by category, we have the cost of goods sold. Well, obviously we have sales here. <laughs> and then we have the cost of goods sold. And the cost of goods sold has its components in it at this point. What makes up the cost of goods sold? The cost of goods sold is made up from direct materials, direct labor, machinery, the overhead that's going to be applied to the production of the inventory. So then we have the other categories being the selling expenses and the general administrative expenses. What are we going to do with the variable budget? We're going to take these numbers and we're going to break them out not in terms of category, but in terms of behavior of cost being fixed or variable type of costs. That will allow us to flex the budget. What does it mean to flex? Well, that means that we're going to change the level of production from 15 to other levels and much more easily be able to change the budget if we put the budget in terms of uh, variable cost versus fixed cost. So we'll see how that would apply here. And so we're going to start off with the sales. I just want to point out briefly that the flexible budget will not be something that we issue to external users. It's something that we're going to use on the internal user side because of this flexibility, because it's easier for us to plan and make scenarios based on a flexible budget. Okay, so we're going to start off with the sales. We're going to say the sales is 210 per unit. How are we coming up with that? It's the 3150000 divided by the number of units being 15,000. 15,000 units. We're going to get the 210. Next, we're going to have the variable cost. These are the ones that will change with the level of production. We've got direct materials. Direct materials being the 930,000 divided by 15,000 gives us that 62 here. Next thing we're going to have will be the direct labor. Direct labor being calculated as the 210,000 divided by the 15,000. That's going to give us that 14 here. Next item we're going to have will be the machinery. So we say that it is variable on the side. We're breaking up the variable items versus the fixed items. So we're going to say that that's going to be the 45,000 divided by the 15,000. That's going to give us 3. And the next item here is depreciation on the factory. So note that we're going to skip the depreciation on the factory because that's a fixed cost. We're going to move down to the utilities. Utilities is what we're going to call a mixed cost in this case. So it has a fixed cost portion and a mixed cost portion. This is where much of the problem is going to be caused when we are trying to break out between fixed costs and variable costs. Because if there's something that's mixed, we're going to have to come up with some kind of estimate in order to do a calculation like this. And uh, this is one of those areas where we're saying it has a variable portion in this case of 45,000. So when we th think about the variable side of it, we're going to say the 45,000 is going to be the variable portion. So we've got 45,000 divided by the 15,000 and that'll be the three and the rest of it will be on the fixed portion side. Next item will be packaging. We're going to skip the plant management because that's going to be a fixed cost as well. We're skipping down to cost of goods sold as a subtitle. We got the gross profit. Then we got the selling expenses. And we're going to say that the packaging is going to be a variable cost. So we're going to not uh, break it out by category as it is here, but we're going to break it out by behavior. In this terms, we're going to have the variable cost no matter what category. So we got the 75,000 divided by the 15 thousand and that's going to be five here so we've got the packaging at five then we're going to have the shipping we're going to say that the shipping is also variable so that's going to be six and we'll take out the calculator on that we got the ninety thousand divided by fifteen thousand to get that six as well and we're going to say that's the total here so we're going to say the total variable costs are going to be added up in this way and the rest of the cost notice that uh, the ones that we have in yellow here there's a fixed cost. This has a fixed portion. This is going to be a fixed cost. The salary is going to be a fixed cost. And the everything in the uh, general administrative down here, the advertising, the salaries, and the administrative staff, and the entertainment are all going to be fixed costs. We need to break those out separately because they're, they're not going to flex when we do the flexible budget. First, we'll calculate the contribution margin. 
And of course, the contribution margin will be calculated as the 210 minus the variable portion, 93. There's the contribution margin. This is actually the contribution margin per unit. So we have the contribution margin per unit. And then the fixed costs are going to be a lot easier for the most part. We're just going to pull over the fixed costs. So we have the depreciation. That's just going to be pulled over here. The utilities is going to be a little bit more tricky because remember it was mixed cost, not fixed or variable. So we're going to pull out the uh, fixed portion here, which would be the 180,000 minus the 45,000, giving us the 135,000. That will be the fixed portion. That's the portion that should not change with the level of purchase. The rest of them I'm just going to put in as a group because they're all going to just pull over and the numbers will remain the same. So we've got the salaries expense on the plant management salaries. That's going to be pulled over directly from here. We've got the salaries uh, that are fixed down here. It's going to be this item here. The advertising, the, the salaries and the admin and the entertainment are going to be these items down here. And once again, the, those will just be pulled over. That's why we're breaking them out in the two columns here. We have the per unit column. We can only really do that with the variable cost because the if we did that with the fixed cost, if we went through here and divided out by the fixed cost, what would happen is it wouldn't flex correctly because <laughs> when we change the level of production, uh, we cannot apply that per unit basis of fixed cost because they behave differently. So that's the point here. That's why we're breaking it out between the two columns. Then we can flex the top half here, the variable items, and we can keep the bottom half fixed as we budget forward. So if we were to add up the fixed cost, we get the 1,316,000. Now I'm going to make a check figure. Notice down here that we can't check to the net income. We can't check to the net income. Why? Because we put it, we could put a per unit cost here, and then we have the fixed cost. So we might want to just double check our numbers here. And one way we could do that is we have the uh, fixed cost on this side, the, the uh, variable cost over here, and the sales. And we ended up down here, if we're going to do the check calculation, we can say, okay, let's take this total fixed cost and let's pretend and use it and treat it as if it was variable. Meaning, let's divide it by the 15,000 in the same way that we did for each of these individual items over here and see what we would get there. So we're going to take the 1316,000 divided by 15,000. That would give us this 87.73 which we're going to round to 88 here. So we're going to say, okay, let's just treat the fixed costs as if they were variable, just so we can tie out to here. Now, we're not going to use this 88 when we do the flexible budget, but it'll give us a check figure to see that we have uh, put everything together correctly so far. So then if we take a look at the per unit income at this one production level, 117 contribution margin minus this 88, we would get about 29, so 29 income per unit. Now, again, that only works at this one production level at 15. It would be different if we had a different production level. That's, that's the problem. That's why we can't use it, but we can use it as a check figure. So then we're going to multiply that times the sales volume and hopefully get to this number here. So if we take the 15,000 times the 29, we get to 435,000. It's a little off due to rounding. So let's calculate it one more time and calculate for rounding. If we took the 1,316,000 uh, divided by the 15,000, it's really 87.73. If we subtract that minus the contribution margin, 117, it's really 29.26. So it's 0.26. Let's put that 0.26 in there and see if it gets us any closer to this number there. So we're going to take the 29.26 uh, here times the 15,000, and that's going to be a lot closer. So it's off by a penny here. So that's going to be the rounding. If you're working with it in Excel, of course, it'll round for you. If you're not, then just be careful of the rounding, and that'll give us a check figure. So it's worth checking that out to see if everything is tying out as you believe it should be. The next step is to flex this budget based on different levels of production. So we had 15,000 in the master budget. Over here, we can say, okay, well, what would happen at different levels? What if we've saved 14,000? What if we said 16,000? We can do some what if calculations and now we can do this much more easily than trying to reset up a budget like this if we had it in this format. So for example, the sales would then be 2,940. How are we gonna calculate that? That's gonna be the 210 times 14,000 and that will be that the next items the variable costs will act in similar fashion so the direct materials will act in a similar way of course being the 62 times 14,000 
Next item, we've got uh, the direct labor. Same idea, it flexes, it changes with the level of production 14 times, 14,000. And then we've got the next item here, machinery. It's also a variable cost. So that's going to be three times 14,000 units. And that's going to be the 42. Next is also three times 14,000. And next one's going to be, of course, the five times the 14,000. And then we've got the six times the 14,000. And we could calculate the total variable cost two ways. We could then uh, say that it's going to be the 93 variable cost per unit times the 14,000. And that should give us the variable cost. We could add up this column. This column here giving us the same number adding up to this uh, 1,302,000. Now, if we then subtract out, we get the contribution margin, the total contribution margin, which is going to be the 2940000 minus the variable cost of 1302. And that'll give us the 1,638,000 contribution margin. And then the fixed costs will be very easy. They'll just pull over just as they are. So the fixed costs are going to be the same there, same there. Fixed costs will all just pull over. If we sum up the fixed cost, then we come up to the total uh, fixed cost. And then we can subtract out the contribution margin minus the fixed cost. So notice how much easier it is to do this here than it would be over here. And of course, if we plug this into something like Excel, then we can put these formulas in there automatically and just copy this stuff down and do this much more quickly if we were able to first make this breakout and make these assumptions in order to break out the cost between the variable and fixed portions. So for example, if we were to do it for like 16,000 years, remember the original budget was at 15. If we broke this fixed budget into this uh, variable format the flexible budget then we could have the units at 14,000 we could say okay well, what would happen if it was at 16,000 well then we're just going to take the 210 times the 16,000 and we get the sales and we can go all the way through this and just copy down the formulas it would be the 62 times the 16,000 we would have the variable cost for direct labor 14 times the 16,000 and the machinery variable cost three times the 16,000 three times the 16,000 then we're gonna have the packaging that's gonna be five times the 16,000. And then of course the shipping would be six times the 16,000. And if we added these up, or if we took the units uh, variable cost of 93 times the 16,000, we would get the total variable cost at the production level of 16,000. And then if we subtracted that out, the sales minus the variable cost, we get the total contribution margin. Or of course we could take the contribution margin per unit times the 16,000 and get the same number and the fixed costs will then pull over just as we would expect them to they will be fixed they will be the same although the level of production has been assumed to change in the flexible budget if we add up the fixed costs we have the same fixed cost no matter what level of production because they're fixed and then if we subtract that out we can easily get to the net income so setting up the flexible budget not the easiest thing to do because we have to break out the cost between fixed and variable portion we need to have some estimates in order to do so. Once it's done, however, it becomes very easy for us to make projections uh, and change the production level and come up with projections based on that.